So Ivan, what do you say to people who say you haven't made a quantum computer, just an NMR device? Flip it. And we're back with quantum device number five. We've pulled out all the stops to get the ultimate sensitivity. I'm talking power rails, ground plane, coaxial cable, six volt battery pack, KitchenAid mixer. KitchenAid mixer? Wait a second. <laughs> Live. We've got relay switches, aluminum sheathing on the core, transceiver coil was cleanly rewound on an actual cable winder. We got twisted pair cables, 100 nanofarad and 10 nanofarad capacitors on all the power rail inputs, and a power supply fancier than my mother-in-law's wine fridge. Microcontroller has been replaced by a Raspberry Pi Pico and the code base has been wholly rewritten. We're talking direct memory access. We got interrupts, ADCs, and a buffer. Each op-amp layer is on its own board. That way, if something needs to be improved, I don't have to take apart the whole thing. I can just swap that board in and out. Similarly, the op-amps are sitting on carrier inserts, which means um, if I need to swap them in and out, it's easy, and I can reuse them whenever I need to. It's more fun than 25 flies. So a recap on how this works, basically you've got the protons and they line up uh, in the Earth's magnetic field like little bar magnets. Now if you tickle them just right, they start to nutate. Yep, that's a real word, don't look at me like that. And so like shadows on Plato's cave, we can see them flip back and forth between their zero and their one states. And then um, by listening to them carefully, we can listen to the ensemble ring. So let's talk results. The thing you have to understand about experimental physics is that Positive results are rarely obvious. If you've seen my LK99 video, you'll see that you always have to be on the lookout for, for false positives. False positives will gaslight you harder than that gaslighting joke I just told you. So in order to combat uh, false positives, we've designed this experiment with three different controls. So the first control is comparing the experiment done with initialization pulse and the exact same experiment without an initialization pulse. If what you think is your signal shows up in both, congratulations, you just got a false positive. For the second experiment, we take a magnet, this one's kind of like a coin magnet, and we put it into the machine um, with the experiment. Basically, this is going to seriously disrupt the Earth's magnetic field near the magnet. What this does is it causes protons near the magnet to oscillate much faster than the ones away from the magnet, which means that uh, they will no longer be oscillating together and the, the strength of the resonance won't be strong enough for us to pick up anything. For the third control, we just remove the water. No water, no signal. So what everyone's been waiting for, here are the results. Um, this is the frequency spectrum uh, response from the machine. Basically, you can see that um, for all of the experiments, you have some um, intrinsic noise in the machine. Um, and then, yeah, for no signal, magnet disruption, and no water, um, those all overlap. What makes me very optimistic about this signal right here in the middle is that it's not something that shows up in any of the controls. This, is, this only happens when all the conditions are right. Another nice thing is that the frequency is, if you can see in the corner, um, 2166, which corresponds uh, very closely to the magnetic field um, Larmor frequency where I live. So leave a comment below for anything else that you think I should put inside the quantum device and test it out. Um, and obviously I'm not done milking this dead horse, so uh, subscribe if this sounds interesting to you. See you guys next time. Die qubits, pew pew, suck it. I'm the quantum. I am the one who quantums. <laughs>